Hello and welcome to Gayton Junction in Northamptonshire. This is the Grand Union Canal. It goes down to London in that kind of direction, Northampton that way and Birmingham up there. And I'm here to spend the day with a viewer on their narrowboat. Here is that viewer, Emma, who wrote to me six years ago whilst a student in London, asking for advice about narrowboat living. Apparently, I emailed back quite a detailed response, and narrowboating turned out not to work for her at the time. But, now graduated and working as a bookseller, Emma's finally been able to achieve her dream of living aboard. When I was at university, I was looking into it, uh, and I read this article that was called I lived in the narrowboat slums of London so you don't have to. And it <laughs> did not depict narrowboating very well and I, I went, surely it can't be that bad and started looking into it more and went, no, this doesn't sound bad at all, I, I like it. Um, so I was, I was after the calm, I was after the, the peace and I was very much after owning my own home. Previously called Dawnbreaker, and now in the middle of a repaint, including being renamed to Ethel the Unready, the boat is 48 feet long and was built in 1999. We think that she's a prototype. We're not 100% sure. Uh, she was, it's a probate sale, so I never met the owners, the original owners. Um, but we think that there was a company called Pedigree Construction that wanted to go into buying, uh, to building boats, and instead of doing that, they built one and decided it was too difficult, and uh, that's this boat. <laughs> Renovations so far include a new cratch board built by Emma's uncle and a new cover over the well deck from that same uncle. On the roof, solar panels, of course. Let's take a quick tour inside, starting by peeking into the saloon at the front, where you can see there's a chair to relax in, and a table which does duty for work, dining and play. Emma's career as a bookseller is hinted at by these shelves, which are next to the fire that keeps everything cosy in winter, not so near as to be set alight though. Other interests include music, but a narrowboat's an odd choice for someone who doesn't like spiders. Behind the saloon, a compact galley is packed with pots and pans, some of which sit atop the propane cooker. Next to the sink is a tall, very useful pantry, and it's good to see Emma has embraced the English staples such as Jaffa cakes. The light switches on board are hidden under the gunnels, so Emma's having brass plaques made to show their locations, and she's getting friends and family to sponsor a plaque to help with the renovation funds. So when you go into the bathroom, for example, you'll find this. And yes, She'll accept bids from you too if you want to sponsor a plaque. At the back, the bedroom has a country cottage vibe, complete with, you guessed it, more bookshelves. The curtains twinkle in the dark, apparently, with planetary constellations. There barely seems room for a person amongst the many stuffed toys on the bed, the highlight of which is surely the terrifying headless doll named Marie Antoinette. Let us step away from such gruesomeness and into the engine room, where not one, but two unicycles take up space. Emma says buying the boat wasn't easy. It was really, really challenging. I'm kind of looking at the lower end of the market and boats were selling literally the next day. I probably saw in person five or six. I looked at hundreds online, but they were literally selling out before I could go visit them. Um, largely they were in really poor condition. Um, so when I saw this one that wasn't in really poor condition and was definitely usable, move onable, not requiring hundreds of thousands of pounds worth of, or tens of thousands of pounds worth of work or overplating or definitely weren't going to pass a survey, I went, yeah, that, that'll, that'll do. I like that one. It was time to set off. So Emma started the engine. She released the bow lines. And did the same at the stern. With the centre line stashed back on the roof, ready for access when needed, we were able to set off.
It was a very breezy day, which can easily push a narrowboat sideways. Emma had kindly invited me aboard as a thank you for writing back to her when she was a student, and I was very pleased to be her guest. We headed west from Gayton Marina back towards the junction and the main north-south route of the Grand Union Canal. Pausing to let this wide beam go first, Emma swung the boat out in a smooth movement. We pottered along quite slowly so as to put some space between us and the other boat. Apart from the wind, it was an excellent day for boating and nice to be back on the canal again, just cruising along for the pleasure of it. I'll let quite a lot of this play without commentary, but I'll also put up the full-length version from this bow camera as a separate video, with the link in the video description. Something to just have on in the background, perhaps. This was unfortunate. The canals are tad narrow here because of all the greenery and the water levels were down a bit too. So as this boat moved over so we could both pass each other, they got totally stuck on the silt. Look at the angle they're at on the bottom. Cue some furious engine revving and a lot of pushing with the barge pole. This is a motor and butty pair. The powered craft, Dover, here on the outside, is quite well known. It was built by Harland and Wolf in 1937 and was converted to liverboard in 2006. I must try to go and do a video about it one day. Another boat passed, without incident this time. we briefly took on a passenger. Emma was taking the boat up to the Midlands. I joined for the stretch from Gayton to Weedon where I'd jump off. She was kind enough to let me do some steering so I could remember what boating is all about. Oh, hark at me steering a narrow boat. It's always interesting steering another boat because they really do handle very differently from each other. Emma's has a really heavy tiller which required a surprising amount of push. I don't think this method of exit out of the side hatch is recommended, but Emma was bringing fortifying supplies. <laughs> That's lunch sorted. 
This takes me back. If you're going to meet two boats in quick succession, I guarantee it will be at a bridge hole. That's Bugbrook Marina. This is very unusual. Does anyone watching know anything about this boat? We slowed down a bit as we were catching up that wide beam. It's a magical little section, this. Emma was back on the tiller so that I could concentrate on eating the biscuits. The main rail line to London runs alongside much of the canal. At this point, we realised we were being caught up by another boat. It's polite to let others pass if they show they want to overtake, but this one wasn't in a hurry. Not long before you get to Whedon, the canal goes under a road with a very blind corner, where a toot of the horn can help to avoid any crashes. We were lucky in not meeting any traffic this time. Guard dog on duty.
And here's the approach to rugby boats, the brokerage, which is oddly named since we're nowhere near rugby at this point. They have a little wharf. And we pulled in as Emma wanted to top up the diesel tank. While Emma and James, the owner, did some hard graft, I played with the Commodore, also known as Bumble. Cruising. Captain's your job. Sorry? That's such a word. On Emma's boat, the fuel cap needs a spanner to remove it. James topped the tank up. <laughs> we'll just get the shot of you feeling and then I'll stop pressing it. Honest, I'll stop. <laughs> then we set off again for the very short hop to Weedon, which is about a mile away. I had another turn at steering, including bringing the boat in to moor. One of my family was going to give me a lift back to the start, where I'd left my camper van. Emma carried on later and says narrowboating suits her down to the ground. I love it. I love the people. I love the places. I love trundling along. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> 